So, let's do something else for a change. Um, it's not really completely something else because uh, I think I've done some touch tracks on my YouTube channel already. Uh, but what I want to do today is uh, create some kind of a instructional video for refurbishing a toast rack. Um, so from start to end, and I want to show you, let, let's move the toast rack bits for the ODB cursor people here. Um, and let's show, show you um, what to do um, what not to do, because there are some things that I leave as they are. Um, I will explain later. And let's check if we have proper video and audio, and if the video is showing up on my YouTube timeline, so I can share it. Yes, we can. All right, so let's share on Facebook. Let's start with my own timeline here. Is the thumbnail okay? Let me check. No, there's no thumbnail yet. Too bad. Maybe I'm too soon. Alright. Yeah, no thumbnail. Unfortunately. It will get there. And what I also want to do is record this video. So the recording is already running and my CPU is <laughs> my CPU is getting mad. <laughs> it's on the uh, well it's on, on 50% now so uh, that's uh, because I'm using three cameras. One of them is uh, uh, 4K, um, but I'm not using it in 4K mode, so they're all at HD at the moment. Um, because I'm not having the correct cable um, here at the moment, I need a USB 3.1 Gen 1 or Gen 2 cable. And believe me, they're hard to obtain if you want to get a proper Gen, uh, sorry, a USB 3.1 cable, and if you want to have one that's longer than 1.5 meter. It's really a pain. So I'm really trying to obtain a, a good one, um, so I can make it in, uh, in HD. Sorry, in 2K or 4K soon. But for now, we're upscaling it from HD to uh, 2K resolution. So the video, YouTube video, should be at 2K. Uh, right. Let's click some stuff away here. Uh, let's put down the desktop audio. We don't need that. Um, so again, I'm also recording this so I can edit it later on and the resulting video will be a bit shorter than the live stream. So we can make a proper uh, instructional video for this. All right. All right. So I think we're set up completely now. We should be. Uh, unfortunately, my... Uh, my Briar camera is, a, is a, some kind of a fish eye strange effect. I'm not sure how to call it. But you can see the lines are not completely straight, and that's a, that's a pity. Um, in the future, I will use a proper um, proper camera with a HDMI capture device instead of this Briar camera. But for now, we have to do with what I have here. All right. So, good afternoon. For everyone joining in, and welcome to this live um, refurbish instructional video for a ZX Spectrum 128K, uh, also known as a Toast Rack. Um, if I'm rubbing my eyes, it's because of the hay fever that's starting up again, and I have to cope with that. It's not really big of a problem. I will, I, I can handle it. Um, so uh, let's see if everything is set up so we can start it off. All right, so let's get to the let's get over to here. And what do we have here? We have a toast rack, of course. This is the most beloved um, ZX Spectrum model, um, except for the Robokey ZX Spectrum, uh, because I think that's the the most well known, and uh, so many people grew up with a 40k Spectrum. So, uh, oh, by the way, I'm, I'm, I hope the mic is not too loud. Uh, because uh, I'm sitting very close to this mic above me. <laughs> um, as you can see, I, I changed the, the setup a bit. Uh, there's a um, uh, lamp here now, which is holding the camera. I made some uh, mounts for it, so I can see everything from right above. And I think that's a good uh, good way um, of viewing this. Um, so this this one is the the most wanted model, I think, from the ZX Spectrum series. Um, because it's, uh, it looks beautiful, 
It has the, the cool, uh, tough looking uh, toast, uh, sorry, uh, heatsink on the right. And uh, well, it's, it's, it's the last real Sinclair machine made, and the models after this one, so the plus two, the plus two A, the plus two B, and the plus three, uh, were made by Amstrad actually. So, um, this is the last original Sinclair one. It has some flaws. Uh, for example, last week I was talking about the clock signal that was that is uh, really uh, very weak on this model. The clock signal, especially going to the edge connector, which causes some issues with uh, some interfaces. Uh, but for the rest, this is just the most um, beautiful looking ZX Spectrum model. Uh, with 128K, the free channel AY chip. Uh, I this was my second machine myself, uh, not especially uh, exactly this one, but uh, when I grew up with ZX Spectrums, my first one was a 48K and the second one was this Toast Rack, and I had have the best memories in my life from the time playing with the my Toast Rack. I really love it. So I already uh, uh, um, removed all the screws, so there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight screws in this one, and nine. If you count this one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, no, eight, eight in total. There are four rubber feet here. They should be in if they're in, if they're not in. Um, sometimes they're available on several websites, uh, but uh, instead of that, you can just use rubber feet, TC feet that you can put on the bottom if you don't have one. But it's important that they're on there because uh, interfaces that that you plug in on the back uh, have have the same height as a spectrum, including the rubber feet. So if you don't have the rubber feet on them. First, you will get scr uh, scratched um, scratches on the back, but secondly, you uh, the, the interface will pull up the computer if you don't have the rubber feet on the on the bottom. So, please make sure that they're on there, uh, or use an alternative or something. So it's already opened up, and you can see the membrane is detached already. And you can see this was an old membrane because it's uh, disconnected. Uh, it's it's cut here, and it's easy to. Um, Get these old membranes. Well, this this is a bit tougher. This this side, they, they easily break because of their age. You can see how easy these these one breaks. If if it was new, it, uh, you were, uh, should not be have been able to do this. But you can see how old this one is. So this one really needs to be replaced. I hope I'm not making anything anyone uh, sick at this moment by doing that. But that's uh, an original membrane. Of course, we got new ones. Um, all right, so. We got a lot of capacitors here, and fortunately, these are the same uh, axial capacitors as in, a, as in the 48k spectrums. So we can use the same VISA capacitors that I use on 48ks. Uh, I got a lot of them, a lot of them here, so we'll do that. Uh, we also need to add a heatsink to the ULA chip, which is important and is a bit tricky because I'm using thermal paste, um, but of course, we still need to make sure that the heatsink is properly glued to the ULA chip. So that's something we have to do. Uh, on a, a positive side, it's not socketed, so we can just put a heatsink on top. And because it's a plus case, uh, e even when it was socketed, it wouldn't have been much of a problem because it wouldn't come too high in the plus case. So, But it, that's no issue at all, we just can mount a heatsink on it. Um, other things you can see here that this broke off here, that hap this happens quite a lot. I've seen uh, several Toastrack or Plus cases with this pin bro uh, broken off. I guess it's because people are too rough with it, I don't know. Um, that maybe they try to get it out or something. You can see, you even see that someone tried to glue, glue the pin back in. Um, I will use something else. I probably will insert a pin and some plastic on top. I will see about that. I think it's uh, it's good that um, that one that uh, reset switch will stay in place. Um, we'll find a solution for that. Um, we'll do it on this video, so <laughs> uh, I hope I will not mess it up. Um, the last thing uh, for now, there are a couple of other things I will discuss when I'm doing the refurbishment. The last thing for now is this voltage regulator, which is a, a 7805 5 volt regulator. Uh, this should be a 2 ampere one. Uh, I'm not sure if this exact type is a 2 ampere one. Maybe it has been replaced already. So I think it's good to replace it again. Or I should look up this type. Maybe it's a 2 ampere one because the toast rack uh, uses, uh, itself uses one, uh, 0 0.8 amperes when nothing is connected. So that's important. Uh, if you if you want to know more about power dissipation, uh, please Google for bite light power measurements or something. 
and you will go to uh, one of my web pages uh, where I've put on some power me measurements of computers and add-ons. So that that's an interesting to know. So if you want to know, can my 7805 or my power supply handle the current that is drawn from this, these old computers, then you can look up um, what each device uses. Uh, there are quite a lot of devices on there, so that could be interesting. Uh, of course, there are also devices that do not use the 5 volt line from the ZX Spectrum internally, but use the 9 volt coming in through the DC socket, and which is also put on the edge connectors. For example, the Interface 1 does that, the Micro Drive does that, uh, the Disciple Disk Interface does that, the Plus D Interface does that, um, but other devices like the um, Multiphase or many different C interfaces just use the 5 volt line from the ZX Spectrum itself, and if it's a modern device like an FMC, it won't consume that much of power because it's all modern CMOS technology. But for example, in multi-phase interface, which has 10 or 15 uh, TTL chips inside, uh, can use quite a lot of uh, power, can draw quite a lot of power. So it's important to know what you are connecting if you re really want to make sure. Uh, mostly, it's it's good to use a 1.5 or 2 amperes uh, power supply to uh, make sure that um, your power supply can handle the uh, power that is needed and this one should be a 2 ampere type just to make sure all right uh, so the first thing we're going to do is to disconnect the board and uh, this one seems to be de screwed um, uh, detached already normally there are two screws on the bottom not here these are for other purposes for example for mounting the interface one or the disciple disk interface don't do not screw screws in here from the top those are not meant for that, so we will get it out and carefully place the case somewhere else so we won't damage it. Um, and let's focus on this board first. So the first thing we will do is we will we'll get all the uh, capacitors out um, and to make myself a little easier I will disconnect the, this cable here for now. Uh, so we will put it back later on. And next thing is, of course, get all the capacitors out. And I think I also have a capacitor map for the toast rack. Let's check it out before removing them. Uh, I think that would be good. Let me Google for capacitor map byte light. Yes, yes, yes. Let me show you. So if you Google for um, byte light capacitor maps, you will find. Oh, yeah, this website, and you will see here the, oh, my camera's gone, the Toastrack capacitor map, and I think I didn't update this scene, you can see it's alive, so let's do that now, so I can uh, use it for the video later on, <laughs> where is my camera, and let's copy this, we'll cut it from uh, the resulting video, of course, alright, that's better. Looks a lot better. Okay, so this is the capacitor map, and you can see all the locations of the, of the capacitors. Just a sec, my son is calling. What is this then? Yes, I'm. I've been a streamer. Yes, I've been a streamer. Sorry for that. <laughs> you didn't know. No, nope, not a problem. We'll cut it out from the, the resulting video. All right. Um, he just arrived home from school. So we will need to replace all the uh, capacitors on uh, on this board, and I'm just checking if uh, this board has the capacitors in exactly the same locations, positions, so we're not missing anyone. Let me check. No, that's perfectly perfectly fine. So we can just get them out and put the new ones in. Or let me check just the polarities of the of the capacitors which should correspond to the picture on the screen. Yes. I think it's all okay. Uh, I haven't used this capacitor map a lot yet because I don't do toast tracks that often, but um, I've checked it a couple of times already, so it should be okay. Yeah, they're all okay. So we can just get them out now. All right, oh, let's get to this one here. And let's see what's happening in the chat. Right. 
So I hope the quality of my work as camera is now a bit better than before because I improved it a lot uh, by uh, repositioning it and using the 4K webcam instead of the uh, HD one. Um, all right. I always um, add some solder on the pins that I'm going to desolder in a moment. And I'm, I will use my desoldering station for that. So let's power it on. Sorry for the bump. So let's go on because uh, the pins are always bent on the bottom of the board, which makes it hard to do these by hand. Uh, you have to straighten the pins first if you want to do that. So um, I prefer using the desolder station for that, but the problem with the desolder station is that the tip doesn't get hot enough some, from time to time to actually uh, melt the solder on all these pins and uh, get them um, get the holes emptied, the pads. So um, I will give it a try with the desoldering station, but first let's do this. Now let me check. Yes, I did one. Here's one. One more. Of course, uh, always be careful with these kinds of cables. Um, sometimes they're really, uh, really loose already. I think I, I will put this in a bit more when we're almost done to make sure that the cable is still fitted to the board without any uh, breaks in the, in the cable itself. Otherwise, you can get in trouble. I might speed this up when I do the final edit on the video. We'll see about that. You can see how much heat this pad takes because it's a huge gr ground plane where the pen is in. So this one, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very sure that I will not get it out with the desolder station. It's, it's way too much uh, heat that it, that hole needs. So I can just try it with the manual pump. So this is a Weller solder iron, soldering iron, and you can see how much energy it needs. And it's at, at a quite a high temperature. It's at uh, okay. It's not. It's at three three twenty one. So let's increase that a bit. Three sixty, three seventy. It's now. And it's almost empty now. So this this should be enough to get this heat up heated up good enough. So if you use a, a very simple solder iron, then that can be quite a challenge to heat up those pads good enough to uh, open it up. But it's good enough, I can see uh, there's a hole now, so that's okay. There's one more here that I forgot to put some new solder on. Right, so the desolder station is um, heated up, so we can try using that for all the capacitors. Let's start with this one above, and what I will do is I will try to grab it from the side and straighten up with this desolder uh, iron. You have to be careful not to um, miss and uh, put it on, get it on your hand, of course. It's still quite hard to do this. So let's try these ones here. Not, not enough, but it's straight in, so I can do, do it with a manual uh, desolder pump. Well, I don't think this will work as I want to, but I hope we can uh, find a, a bit more decent desolder station in the future. I've been having troubles with this one from the beginning. 
it's a cheap one. No, it just won't work. Let's try another one here. Uh, it's not enough. It's not enough heat. I can up the heat, the temperature a bit, but I don't think it, that will make much of a change. It's just the quality of this uh, this gun. So that that hole actually did work <laughs> for a change. This one as well, it seems. Almost, almost. But we're straightening the pins up, and that's uh, fine for now. All right, two more here. All right. Let's get to these ones here. It's almost, but it's just just not enough to properly get all the solder out of the holes with this one. Anyway, let's continue. Alright. This I'm doing in a different way. So let's grab this one here. All right. Another way of doing this is just grab them from the top of the board and pull them out. That's a uh, Often the, the simplest way, but sometimes you cannot heat the pads up enough to get all the solder f uh, fluid on the bottom of the board. If you solder them on the top, so it can still be hard. This works. And most people will probably have a manual pump like this one, and which is good enough. It will do the job. So as you can see, I try to get all the solder off on the bottom first, and then we can pull them in, uh, from the top in a second with some more heat. Of course, do not start pulling without uh, heating up the pads, otherwise you will damage the board for sure. And we don't want to happen that to happen. All right. Exactly, Lewis. So indeed, uh, the soldering for these bent pins is quite hard, as Lewis says. But I do uh, get it working, and, and the main issue is that the, the solar station that I use here uh, needs uh, about 10 minutes to heat up completely, uh, because the tip is a is, is, the, is a part that that is that is um, just sitting to the heating element inside the, the the gun. So you really need to wait until it's heated up thoroughly. That takes some time. That's uh, my experience. So if I wait a couple of more minutes might be easier. But for now we'll do this way. Okay, my pump is blocked, so I have to get some stuff out first. Some garbage in there. Should open it up again. Need to do it from time to time to clean up and carefully. Okay, so this one seems to have a lot of solar on the butt on the top. All 
right. So this board is actually for a customer who, uh, who has been waiting for a long time uh, after we spoke about the toast rack. So this one is from my own stock and I'm not going to offer uh, more toast tricks at this moment because I have so much other work to do. But I promised uh, this person to get one ready for him um, with some other repairs that he sent in. So that's why I make uh, an exception for now. Uh, okay. Did, this didn't go to plan. <laughs> Okay, you can see there's another another ground plane here, and these are uh, sometimes a pain to get loose. Um, you need heat, and this is 75, uh, so sorry, 75, so sorry, 70 watts uh, soldering iron, um, which is just enough for these pads. You can see it's still not getting loose. Let's see on the other side. The other side also has a ground plane, so. That's really a hard one. Um, so there are ground planes on both sides of the board. Uh, that should have been handled differently. You, you don't want to solder pins into ground planes. You you can do that, but then the pins should have uh, some um, spacing between them and the ground plane and then be connected by small uh, tracks and not by a full ground plane. You can, you can see this is really hard. It's too hard to do this way, so we'll uh, disconnect it from the top of the board when we get there. Let's see if I can loosen up some other ones here. We have some here. That's one. And I always try to be careful with uh, doing this because you will you can easily damage the board if you're not paying attention. Um, I have tested this board of course. Um, some people say you should not uh, power on a machine with old capacitors, but I want to make sure that it is working before I do anything to it, and this one is working, so that's not a problem. So we're just doing refurbishment work, and taking care of capacitors is very important. So. Capacitors, capacitors will uh, last for, let's say, about 20-25 years at max. Um, I think it's wise to replace them earlier on, but um, most people don't do that. And th these devices are from 86, I think. Let me check. Yeah, 85 even. So they're uh, quite old. Thirty-five years, almost. So that's quite a long time, and these capacitors really need to be replaced. Don't wait any longer. Alright, so now we can grab them from the top with a, a tool. Let me pull put this back. We don't need it anymore. Let's get these parts out. And again, since I checked the capacitor map, if it corresponds to all the locations and orientations of these capacitors, I can just pull them out without looking any further because I know where to put them in by using the capacitor map. I think I forgot two here, we'll do that in a minute. Two. Time I will open up these holes here. Right. And now let's do these two. I think I can do them from the top, so that's not the biggest issue. Cut 
kind of feels like surgery doing this. Um, I'm not a doctor, but <laughs> it feels like it. <laughs> Probably uh, doctors won't agree with me, but surgeons. Oh, sorry. Right. So that's, that's those are done. And then let's get to the other ones. So the board is getting very empty at this moment. I don't like the look of, of a board without the capacitors on it. <laughs> it's an incomplete board. It's missing lots of uh, important parts if you get all of them disconnected, removed. Need some fresh solder here to heat it up properly. And now we can remove it. Let's open up the holes. Okay, let's try it from the bottom. This was uh, the one with the double ground plane. Ridiculous, but anyway, that's how it was done back in the days. So we just need to wait to heat it up a bit more. Nope, still not enough. Let's put on some fresh shoulder again. Almost. Again, some fresh shoulder. Yeah, there's a hole now. We're getting there. We need some patience. Come on. Let's try it from the top again. Top is even harder. So uh, imagine you're using a soldering iron that only has uh, 20 or 25 watts and this will be a real pain. I think you're not able to do this with uh, something less than 50 watts. Well, I do not like heating up places on boards for this long. Oh wait, this can be a cause of course. It's not a big problem because it's just a ground plane, so you cannot do much harm to other parts now, but it's not enough yet. Yeah, okay, this is it. Almost, almost. I can see the hole, but it's not completely clean. So let's use some desolder wire here. Let's see if we can improve that. Yeah, now, now we have a hole, finally. Okay wasn't a hole in one, but it's a hole. If you uh, do this from the top, it's easy to uh, make shorts between tracks surrounding the, the pad that you're actually working on. So please make sure that you're not creating any um, soldering joints um, that you don't want there and I, I prefer I really like using a magnifier glass or something else uh, you could use a microscope if you uh, have the space for something like that um, I know people uh, working on uh, modern SMD boards like Louis Rosman do that um, but for spectrums I can do it by eyeballing the board as far as I my experience goes so I think we removed all the electrolytic capacitors now Yes, I'm not missing anything. No, okay. So we can uh, put in the new ones. Let's remove the garbage a bit. And uh, it's all, all way, oh, almost bumping a lot of uh, new 
uh, new cases, uh, new Pro 1 cases here, the, I shouldn't bump them. <laughs> They're falling on the ground, I have some rework to do. Alright, uh, if you uh, do this a lot, then you should have something like this. Uh, I don't blame you if you don't. <laughs> so I'm going to get my capacitor map on screen again for myself now. Alright, so I need three 100 microfarad ones, let's start with those. These are the, the thickest ones, if you can call it that. And then that's one. So this board will become more blue now. In a good way. And I'm checking the polarity of the capacitors on my capacitor map. and it, But it, there's also uh, pluses on the, on the board itself, so you can use that as well. For the orientation of the capacitors. All right. Sorry for that. But as I told you, I have um, I'm coping with hay fever every year. Uh, let me check. Uh, 47 ones. We need three of those, and these are only used on the 128k models. So um, get some if you need uh, to work on toast tracks or plus twos. For some reason this seems a bit smaller than, uh, than the, I bent the pins, so I will change it in a second. First let's get the other ones in, and these, on, these, one, these ones are the standard size, these holes. Another one here. Right, so these are 47s. Let me check by the way, uh, yeah, 47 is on, written, printed on the capacitor itself, which is useful. So, I need three one microfarad ones. I'm reading that from the capacitor map. So, one microfarad, and they're in purple on my map, which is easy to locate them. Oh. This one goes in here. And this one goes. Oh, I shouldn't have put it on the board, I think. And here. I'm gonna lift this one just for aesthetic. Yeah, nice. Alright, and now we need one 4.7. It's below this one here. Alright. And 4.7 is the peach colored one, which goes in here. And lots of 22. So, total four. Uh, the first one goes in here. Um, let's, let's do this one first. Then one here. Oh, the hole's not empty, so let's open it up. Now it is. I think I see another hole that I didn't open up yet. All right. Oh, wrong way around. Make sure you're using the correct polarity, otherwise you can blow up these capacitors. I've done it before. <laughs> it's not my, wouldn't be my first time. So make sure it won't happen. And one more in this position here. And they really can blow up. They can smell very um, awfully and they can even get to fire if you're not making sure that you're, they are put in the correct way. So you can see now the board looks quite more blue, uh, bluish. And we can now solder the capacitors to the board, and we'll cut the pins after that. And uh, I usually solder the bottom, the top and the bottom of the pads here, uh, because uh, it looks nicer, it looks better, and also uh, it can make better contact, but I don't think that's so important. It's just mainly I do that for looks, so you don't have any pads that uh, look bad or something. 
So the first of them, the top of these. Come on. Oh, this is the ground plane one. <laughs> so even soldering it back is quite a pain. But we'll do. And I'm waiting for the one on top because uh, I need to uh, size it a bit. We'll do that in a minute. So these fissile capacitors are well known to use for re refurbishment work. Uh, the color is quite nice. They look better on a 48K spectrum or 16K spectrum, but uh, for a toast track it's not that bad. And I think it's better than all the different colors that were in. <laughs> Although that makes the... that creates the look of the toast track, of course. So if you want to keep it original, then use all the colors that you can find. I won't keep you from that. Oh, <laughs> I, I must move the board because there are some PCBs underneath there, which are pushing up the capacitors. Right. And when this has been done, uh, the board will last for, uh, well, let's say another 25 or 30 years or something, or even lo longer than that. A side color for this. Let's start here. So this one can still fall out. So we have to take, take, uh, keep an eye on that one. It's not solid yet. So now I am a head hair. Um, <laughs> okay, Paul, you're right. You can do this one by one, of course. Uh, so what I'm doing here is, uh, <laughs> may I call it the advanced refurbishment work? <laughs> so actually you can of course uh, do these one by one. You're totally right. Maybe that would be would have been better for an instructional video. I think you're right. But uh, these capacitor maps are on the web, so you can use them for your own benefit. It makes life easier, if you ask me. So I think it's important to make sure they're properly lined, looking good. So this board will, uh, people will smile when they see a board like this, you know, and it's done properly. Okay, so I think we got all the capacitors on. We can remove the capacitor uh, container here and check. Let me check if I've got all the capacitors now. I think so. Just double checking. Yep. Okay. So as I said, I will check all the soldering joints on the bottom of the board. Because they didn't look quite nice when you just do the top of the board first. Right, and uh, I, I I used to use uh, alcohol to rub off the, the flux remainders, but on these boards that's quite a bit tricky because there's a solder mask all over the board, and if you use alcohol, you will also rub off the, so, um, the solder mask. So only for the places that it, there where it's really needed, like um, you can see that. Uh, Z80 has been replaced here by someone else. Uh, it's not done very properly, so we'll reflow them again in, in a second. Uh, but these are a bit dirty, so we'll clean them up with some cotton swabs. All right.
that's not needed to clean it but I think it uh, it's good to make the board look as new as possible especially after a refurbishment job I think it's part of the quality if you ask me and I uh, sometimes I think I would like to have a uh, ultrasonic cleaner but that could mean that you will rub off more of the um, solder mask and I don't want to uh, to do that so we'll probably just keep using a bit of alcohol from time to time and I mean on the board all right so most of the joints look quite nice now checking if I missed any I think I got most of them. Yeah, they look quite nice. So let's do these ones here. Just adding a bit of new solder, not too much. And then we'll clean it up. Check after the joints here. All right, let's clean up. So usually if I would replace a Z80 CPU myself, I would use a socket instead of uh, soldering a working one back in. But the person who's done this didn't use a socket. It's not a big problem, but I just uh, if you if you remove a part and uh, that part can go dead for some reason in the future, then it's good to have a socket there and uh, ZEDs can die. They can uh, or they can have a non-working M1 line. That happens a lot. Fortunately, there are millions around, so if you need a replacement Z80, it's easy to get one. <coughs> Just make sure that you're using an animals type for these original ZX Spectrums, and that can be a bit tricky because uh, if you buy, try to source a uh, animals type Z80. Um, uh, CMOS will work, but not very reliable when it comes to add-ons. But if you want to source a NMOS or CMOS, um, <coughs> my experience is that um, they're all blacktop nowadays, remarked, so you don't know if the part that, which uh, that's written on in a silk screen on top of the chip is actually the part that you're getting. And you can fortunately you can check if you're having a CMOS or NMOS type using Brennan Alfred's. Uh, diagnostic software there's a feature built in in the latest version to check if you are using a CMOS or NMOS Z80 um, but other than that you cannot tell it from the chip because they're mostly reused old stock chips right so these ones are almost clean you can see this still a bit yellow coming off here it's not uh, too bad the board looks a lot better these pads look a lot better, so that's the most important. And I'm uh, being gentle to this board because it's such a beautiful board, a beautiful machine. People will call me crazy, but I like seeing these old computers. Okay, if you ask me, this looks a lot better. It's quite clean now. It looks as if it's not touched 
before it's still a bit of dirt but it's a little better than it was so let's keep it this way yeah, I like it some uh, stuff from the cotton swabs here but all right let's check if there are any joints or something no just a bit of uh, Remainders of the cotton swabs. I don't like that, so we'll get them off. That's better. Okay, it could be cleaned a bit more, but I think it's good and looking good enough. So let's keep it this way for now. Uh, always check the DC in input socket. Uh, this one has some corrosion on it, so we will we will replace that as well. And these uh, are easy to obtain as well, as you can see. I've got hundreds of them even more because it says there are more <laughs> in, the, in the red paper there and these sockets uh, need some attention because the, the new ones that I'm putting in and the old ones as well by the way they easily melt the plastic is uh, melts at very low temperatures so make sure that you're not heating it up too long and for the old one it's not a big problem of course and make sure you're using 5.5 .5 outside diameter and 2.1 inside diameter uh, plugs, sockets, and not any other type, otherwise the plugs won't fit. It's a bit hot here. Alright, so I'm checking if the, the top of the board is clean, and otherwise the socket will not uh, be able to push to the board completely so removing some solder here with my desolder wire and uh, you, you can get these for the, these these rolls for uh, one or two pounds each so just get get some you can uh, oh other side of course duh. you can use them for this kind this kind of work so uh, by the way talking about tools um, I'm working on a, a wiki page, uh, I've discussed it on uh, Facebook uh, a, couple, a couple of days ago, yesterday and the day before that. Um, people, uh, including myself, are interested to finally uh, get a repair wiki, so we can store all our knowledge and information on a page that will be available for everyone, so repairs can be done by more people in the future, which is quite important for these old machines. I'm waiting a bit for, for this to cool off first. Um, uh, I have to check which wiki type fits the, the, that purpose the best, because there are so many types of wikis. Um, and the most important thing is that we can moderate the, uh, the changes. So there won't be uh, stuff on there that's not correct or not reliable or something. Uh, we don't want to uh, to get instructions that will damage your ZX Spectrum, so we want to be careful with that. Uh, hence, we want some uh, moderation options, and of course, for that you need um, to have a wiki where you can set some privileges on accounts and that sort of thing. We need moderators as well, of course. So, working on that, uh, there there was uh, some wiki on the on the World Spectrum website in the past, but I don't think it was used that much. And now we have the ZX Dia card. Many more people want to be able to find information of how to repair your Spectrum and experiences from other people and that sort of thing, you know, so that, that's why uh, the wiki must be there. And one of the things I want to do on a wiki is uh, add information of what tools you need to properly be able to repair your stuff. Right, so we uh, got all the capacitors replaced, we cleaned up this uh, uh, bottom of the board a bit, we put in a new DC socket, and uh, you can obtain them from eBay for example, it's, it's very easy. Um, th that's one of the things I would want to put in a wiki, uh, where, this, where you can obtain these parts, you know, it's important. Uh, I think it's good to put on the heatsink now. And Everyone uses these, um, I forgot uh, the type, Fisher, Fisher something, Fisher electronic heatsinks. These are uh, perfectly suitable for uh, 48K ULA chips, um, but they're a bit small for 
the 128k types because you can see the 128k types are longer than the, the heatsink but it's not a big problem because the, the chip itself is, is in the middle here of course and not ever, uh, somewhere else uh, let's put on some thermal grease first, not too much this is really more than enough because I know it's being spread when you push down the heatsink itself so I'm going to move it a bit wiggle 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 and then put on some uh, super glue and that's always a bit of a pain on these 128k ULA chips uh, because you can only reach the, the top and the bottom of, sorry the upper and the lower end of the chip I'm not sure what the best uh, description for that is and it's not not that much of, of a soldering uh, uh, gluing uh, solution of course because I usually try to put glue on all the all the edges of the heatsink where it, where you can where can the, the the place you can reach actually reach of course so let's put some on, on some here this should be enough but oh it's it's going <laughs> it's inside the, the heatsink itself I don't like that but okay just have to wait a bit so it should be enough to uh, to mount the heatsink but um, I often want, always want to make sure that's enough, really enough, so it's hard this way. Anyway, get off the excessive amount here. All right. Okay, this will uh, dry up. In the meantime, um, okay, I was talking about these uh, cables here, so we're going to add some fresh solar and also push them in, in a bit more than they at the, uh, are at the moment. So we could put something on the bottom first because it's important that this cable um, will stay to connected to the board properly all the time. So now I'm going to push all the three of the wires. And you can choose yourself if you want to use the original uh, DC uh, voltage regulator, which is 7805 at this moment, or if you want to replace that with a, for example, Traco power or DC DC converter from uh, eBay or somewhere else. Uh, if you get the correct ones, then they are quite reliable. Uh, the Traco power is known for uh, its quality and size, but um, again, as I said, uh, one ampere is not enough for this board. So you should should get a 1.5 or 2 ampere version of the Traco power um, 5 volt regulator instead, um, and those are quite a lot more expensive than the one ampere one the version. Uh, but because it's a toast rack and the heatsink on the right side of the case um, is there, um, I really tend to leave this on because it's it should get warm. The, the heatsink should get warm. That's that's just my two cents. Uh, that's what I like. All right, so we can also put back in the uh, reset cable now. And I'm thinking if I'm not forgetting anything. Yeah, there's there's some improvements that we can do. So, by default, Sinclair decided to add audio to the antenna output by adding it to the video composite video signal before going into the modulator. There's really no need for that because the modulator can have a, a audio externally, but that's the way um, that's the way Sinclair did it. Um, so. Uh, the downside of that, of that method, is that the video gets a bit distorted by the audio signal. And the easiest way of uh, uh, solving that is just to cut this capacitor C126 at one leg, and lift it up a bit, and then the distortion on the video output, composite video output, is gone completely. If you are using a RGB cable uh, with the RGB connector, and of course the RGB signals are here, and also the composite video signal, which I will be using for testing, um, but if you use RGB, this is not needed because it's not a distort, doesn't distort the RGB output. 
Uh, also, if you still want to have audio on the RF output, you should either leave it on the capacitor or uh, use the bypass, which is described in the video fixes document that can also be found by Googling for it. Uh, so Google for uh, video fixes and by the light and you will find the document. Uh, mind there that there are several versions around because people mirrored the document in the past. Uh, but the best one to get is the one on bytelight.com itself because it's updated and there are some important things about uh, the blanking signal on um, uh, on the toast rack. So if you want to use an RGB cable from a toast rack um, and make sure that you're not overloading the ULA chip, uh, then get the last version of the document which has some important uh, notes about that. So I just want to check if this is properly mounted or not. This is properly mounted. This, this is stuck, it won't come off. That's the most important. Okay, so we did an improvement here, which is important. Uh, let me check if I have some more improvements to do. I have this uh, refurbishment story, <laughs> which uh, tells me about a couple of things I shouldn't should not forget. So uh, we did a composite video improvement. We just did that one, and I don't think there are any 128k fixes here, except for that. No. So that's good. By the way, we're also going to refurbish a um, original power supply for our toast rack. <laughs> Sorry for the noise again. If you don't like it, just blame the hay fever. And we need to find a solution for the bottom of this case. I could just grab another case, which is the easiest for now. <laughs> but I think it would be nice to uh, to see if we can find a proper solution here. Um, so let's power off the soldering iron for now. And let me check if I can find a plastic what is going on here? Plastic parts that I can use to create a new bus for the screw hole there. I think I have some here. But these might be too wide. No, these are too wide. So if I would put this on, this, this won't fit. I have some smaller one here. But it's still too thick, as you, if you can see it. So that won't really be a solution. So, what I have in mind is just use a pin, maybe even a, uh, a nail, and get that one that in, and then maybe put some uh, shrinking tube around it. That could be a solution. Um, I think that would be a nice one. So let's try that out. Oh, sorry, sorry about the bump. Discord server. All right. Um, for, you mean for uh, for the stream? Right. So I got a nail here, and that might be a solution because it, we we can we can only create a very small hole there. So I think I will try give that a try first, and before doing anything else, I want to. Create a very small hole. I will just use the solar iron for that. Very small hole only, just here. To start with, because we need to start with a small hole that we can put a nail in, and then heat heat up the nail without keeping it by hand, of course. Um, we can also drill a hole. That might be fine as well. So let's give that a try. I think that would be better. So let's find my smallest uh, drill here. Oh, this one's still charging. What? Well, let's grab it. Now I should be very careful because I don't want to damage the board any further. But I think this will work. Yeah, we'll get there. Nice. 
How deep are we? Not that deep. Alright. So I think we got about half a centimeter, yes. Just a bit more. Yeah, this is deep enough. Nice, very nice. That was easy. Just me. So the nail still won't fit, I guess, because it's too thick. So should I heat it up? I think I will heat it up and use some glue um, after that. But first let's heat it up a bit. But now it's more easy because there's already a, a tunnel for it. This might take some time. So I want to get it in completely. I don't think this, uh, this will be a proper solution. It will take too long, I guess. We'll use some solder to heat it, heat it up even quickly, more quickly. Uh, that will work. Now we have to wait. This will uh, this will not take too long because um, the soldering iron is at 360 degrees and we need only about 200 degrees to melt the plastic just a bit more to get this nail in. So I think it's already sinking. Yeah, it is getting in already. We're almost there. Maybe it's on the bottom already. I think so. I think it's in as far as it will go. Alright, let's uh, make sure it is cooling down. Alright. That's good enough for now. Uh, let's put it down and get some shrunk tube here. And it's only to uh, make sure that the reset wire will not uh, get from its place. Uh, so we will use some shrink tube and wrap that around it enough that it will uh, not get from its place again. Let's get a car here. And I actually don't know the exact height, so let me check it on the case. So I've got another one here, and it's almost to the top of the of the bottom of the shells. Um, so I think we should not cut too much of it. So about this size here, a bit lower. That's that. And now we are going to put some of this heat shrink around it. And this will be tricky by the way, because I have some lighter here, but uh, yeah, there's some plastic part. All right. Not too much, but enough. Right. Second layer. And the third layer. That's quite nice, the solution. Okay. 
This is awesome. I like this. I think it's about the correct size. Let's check that. So this should stay in place now. Maybe it's too thick already. <laughs> yeah, it seems to be too thick. Uh, this will work. So, this is a proper solution for a reset switch. It won't come off at any time soon. Right, I like that. What do you think, guys? Sorry for a noise. Soldering wicks over a sucker. Never done it. I can imagine that will help. I sometimes use wick and add some uh, solder um, to make the, the, the wick uh, suck up all the solder from the, the pad or the joint or something. Uh, I, I do do that from time to time, so that's uh, nothing special. Alright, uh, okay, I, I'm, I'm almost certain that this is not the original 7805 um, regulator, because this one seems to have been used in a board already, because the legs are not completely straight and are not the correct, there's the same length. So I think this one has been reused from some other machine. Uh, because of that, I don't think it's actually a 2 ampere one, so we're going to replace it by a proper 2 ampere 7805 chip regulator. Lots of those. Always make sure you get a couple in stock if you uh, need them. So this is a 78S05, which is a 2 ampere version. There's some uh, thermal paste in between here, I can see that. It's already on my fingers, I don't like that, but hey. Let's get the original one off here. Let's throw that one away, and let's get the new one on. Someone's calling. I have no idea who that is. I don't pick up my phone that much when I don't know who it is, because you get so much spam nowadays. Alright. And if they don't leave a message, then most probably it is spam. I do like spam, by the way. With pickles. Spam with pickles is the best. My father taught me. <laughs> spam with pickles. I'm not referring to the Orville. <laughs> Alright, so that's mounted properly again. Um, now I do have to check if the cable will connect to this one. Um, how it should be oriented, oriented, because I did move it a bit. And I always want to make sure that I'm not blowing up anything here. <laughs> that would be a waste of time. And I've done it. There's even someone in the chat who's in Africa at the moment. <laughs> Uh, whose uh, machine I've killed uh, on a fair and I still have to repair it. We'll get to that uh, as fast as I can, but there's so much work to do. And then there are more, many people waiting for a long time, hence I just need to get it on, get it going. So, alright. Now, before doing any, anything else, you have to get these pens a bit to the top and as I said I want to make sure that I'm using the correct orientation of the plug so I'm just going to check I know that the left pin of the 7805 is the input pin so that should be connected to the positive pin on the uh, DC input socket which is not the center pin but the outside as most spectrum people know and that should be this one and then the 5 volt should be this one here, and which goes to, for example, this pin here. Yeah, okay, and this one here. Alright, so that's okay. There's no short between them, alright. So, the red wire is the output, the 5 volt output, and the blue wire is the 9 volt input. So it should be connected this way. So let's get some original screws in then. getting a bit crowded on my desk here. Sorry for the bump again. <laughs> Alright. Let's 
Let's move the camera a bit, which is easy now because I just can move it all around. That's the, the, the good thing about my new setup here. So, let's get two original screws. This is one original screw and this is the second original screw. Those are the ones that go into this board. Um, I'm not sure if those two come from the same board, so I'm going to get another one to match them just for uh, the ODD people amongst us. <laughs> uh, just joking, guys. All right, that's one. And that is two. All right, of course we need to do a test in a, in a minute. All right, uh, are we not forgetting anything here? I don't think so, but just want to make sure. Heatsink is on, yeah, I think we're, we're about to go. Good to go. So, let's do a quick test on the other side. There, it's waiting for us. Yes, the camera is working, yay. All right, let's power doing, doing some video and just make sure that we get the picture out good. And there it is. It took some time. Why did it take longer than I thought? Is this a one microfarad? Yes, it is. So the reset capacitor is the correct value. Oh, I think it's okay. Oh, too bad. This switch cable is bad. It works, but I think because the previous owner has done some, tried to glue it on in the case. It's not the best quality anymore, so I think we need to replace that. And let's see if I can find one. I, I had one a couple of days ago. I put it here somewhere. Let me check where the leaf. Ah, I can see it. It's on the floor here. Yeah. Okay. So we will replace the reset button in a second. I have an original one and replacement. Um, all right. Let's do some uh, some tests before continuing. Some quick tests, so we have a output, we have a tape input. I've already tested that, but I just want to do another test in a second. Let's clean the edge connector before doing anything else. This one is a bit dirty, so I think... Oh, it seems to have been cleaned, but it looks dirty. I think it's just a bit of corrosion, but... It's not too bad. All right. Nice. That works. Very nice. Okay, we will do some more fourth tests later on. For now we can see that everything is properly working. So let's uh, replace the Reset button. If we can get the old one out. <laughs> it's a bit tight, not too bad. Let's first make sure it's really, yeah, it's really button. So, previous owner did some, this is a lot better. Yeah, you can see there it has some glue on it. So someone tried to glue it on the case, but I don't think that will work. Let's grab some uh, handy fingers here, which I use quite a lot. So let's throw that one away. Right. First, let's put on some new solder here, and the same on this one here. And of course, with a reset switch, it doesn't matter which. Uh, wires on which side 
case you were wondering about it. Oh, come on. I don't like the solder on the wire, so let's add some more. It's an old cable, so it might um, not solder easily. Okay, so we need to test it later on to make sure it is actually working, but I don't think it will not. And I can see this needs a bit of glue, it's almost coming up, so let's add some glue and be careful with that. Let's twist it a bit, it's already almost stuck, so that's good. I want to make sure that the glue is going everywhere. And because we are uh, pushing the pushing it to the switch, uh, it won't go anywhere. So that's not a problem. This feels a lot better than the older one. Okay, so that's done. Oh, there are some original screws in this bag here. Okay. So. This is uh, complete, um, it's uh, screwed back in, uh, this is still stuck, if this is moving then it's good to glue it, in, uh, glue it on the board because uh, it could cause problems in the future, the, the coil here. Um, so next thing is to replace the membrane. Let's get a membrane. Alright, so, got a couple, so let's grab one here, and of course, uh, these, oh, these are not all uh, plus membranes here, we've got uh, lots of uh, 48K membranes, and lots of plus membranes, and I mostly use these for uh, refurbishment work, but um, I do sell them on a the web shop as well, though, because I get them from known sources, uh, it's often cheaper if you want to obtain one from the sources where I get them, it's not a problem. Uh, I just have to add a VAT and, uh, and text to uh, to my sales. That's uh, that's the reason why they're a bit more expensive. But of course, if you uh, place an order at ByteLed.com and you want to save on shipping, it can be economically wise to get a membrane at the same time, you know. Okay, I'm lazy. Many people know that. So. Old one gone, new one in. It's not a problem that it's a bit bent because it will be pushed down. But make sure that the, the holes, the small holes here, align with the two very small pins on the case itself and don't break them, that's bad. So be careful with those pins and then put the plate back on it also with the small plastic pins in the correct holes. Let me check where's the other one here. Yeah. And if you if you lay it down, then you will push the the membrane and the, the plate to the top again. So I will keep hold it for a minute and start with uh, putting it back in the three screws in the middle from the middle, uh, by the way. So I always start with the middle one. Um, let's not put not too much force on it. Right, it's one. And after we've done these. We can uh, put it place back because it is, it's already mounted, so we can add the other screws and finish it off. Uh, I'm checking again if they're still in the correct place, and I can see that one of the holes is not at the correct spot anymore. So I, uh, yeah, I'm repositioning that one. Sorry. Right. So this is uh, how it should be placed. 
the two little ones. Oh, Solderwix over. Oh no, I understand what you mean. I I I, I like Solderwix, um, but they they uh, sometimes do not uh, empty a hole in, uh, when you use them in, uh, over a, a pump. So I I use both. Uh, I use Solderwix to really clean pads and tracks, and I use a pump to empty holes. That's uh, what I can say about that. So it's not that I prefer one over the other. I use both. Yeah, I do not use that much flux because uh, flux is used for SMD components and not really for older through hole components. Um, I know, know some people do even on uh, through hole. Uh, I don't think it's really needed. I just use uh, add some new uh, solder instead of using flux. But I have uh, some uh, syringes with uh, good quality flux. All right. So if you um, connect these two brackets here, I always personally pull pull back the membrane a bit here. Not press too hard because I don't want to break tricks. And of course, the, these membranes are new. And the reason I pulled it back is that when you tighten the screws and you uh, release the, the tension, the the edge is quite nice. It's it's not there's not too much too much tension on the on the on the, the places there from the membrane, so you won't. Uh, it won't be the, the, the membrane is not stre stressed a lot. That's what I mean. That's what I want to say. And of, co of course, be careful with screwing in these sc holes, uh, screws here, because if you over tighten them, they will break, and you have to use some glue to fasten them. So be careful with that. All right. So this is nice. We will test that out in a minute. Oh. So first, put it in here. And there's one thing that you need to do when using a new membrane, and that's add some uh, tape there. I will show you. So I use uh, this thick adhesive tape, which is the, uh, easy to use. And this is needed for uh, both electromagnetic um, uh, insulation and also to make sure that these contacts, which are uh, on some brains are open, membranes are open contacts, do not touch the middle of the of the um, uh, modulator here. So this, uh, please do this all the time, because if you close the case and keys are not working, that's the reason, that's the cause, and you know. Okay, let's see if all the, no, we need some to add some feet, we'll do that later, I have, I have them in stock somewhere. And I think the, uh... okay. So we need to remove some of the um, um, some of the shrink tube because it's touching the top of the case, and we don't want that. That will be easy. Be careful! <laughs> I've cut myself so many times in the past. I think this will do. I just want to know if it's really low enough. Yeah, this should be low enough. Maybe I sh just should cut a very little piece of this pin if we can without damaging anything else. Uh, okay, let's look away for a second. Oh, just a bit more. Yeah, okay. I think it's better. Is it? <laughs> Might still touch the top and I don't want that. So I'm just going to cut a little bit more. I have to, the feeling I need to file a little bit. And I don't like that because we're the motorboard is already in the case. All right, let's try it again. Uh, this is just very cheap tape that I got from some cheap store. <laughs> so now it will uh, now it fits uh, perfectly as I as it needs. All right, so this is uh, complete. Um, we'll do another test and then we will work on the power supply. Let's do a test.
All right. So as I said, I'm using a composite video output here. That's all the keys. And you really shouldn't need much force to press these keys. You can see I'm really pressing them very simply. Uh, and I check all uh, the combinations like uh, extended mode, caps lock, graphic mode. And everything works as it should. Even stop works, which is a problem on 48k boards. In a plus case, for example, this is a close rig, so it's different. So this all works just fine. Uh, let's test the tape input. All right. Okay, we can continue loading, but I just want to. Uh, do some testing of interfaces and so oh let's do, by the way let's uh, do a quick diagnostic test before doing anything else uh, maybe it's good to show you that this U, uh, z80 chip is actually the animals type you can see it's animals it uh, says here on uh, the latest version of the diagnostic software from brandon elford uh, so it's an animals chip and that's what i wanted to know and now let's do a full diagnostic check some uh, oversaturation on the colors which doesn't look quite well on composite video but it's the output of the, uh, the toast track so you can use either a RGB cable, I have an RGB cable here but uh, I'm too lazy <laughs> or you can use for example uh, this XHD of course which will output um, a, uh, HDMI uh, which is probably sharp and uh, got QLA plus colors as well this is a, this is a bare one uh, of course they are sold with a case uh, but I use this for testing and I also use this for testing a recipe pies and other stuff. Well, hence I'm using that one without anything else. Let's do full test. It seems to be okay. Alright. Nothing special here. So this machine is completely refurbished and ready, ready to go. There's one thing I, uh, I must add, and this, that is this refurbished sticker label. I'll put it on the bottom of the case so people know who's been working on this. And it's easy to get up. If you don't like it, it's easy to remove, so please don't worry. <laughs> I won't do, put it over a screw or something. I won't screw you with that. So it looks like this. Do you like this sticker or not? Please let me know. <laughs> anyway, okay, this dose work is done. I will put it here because we're go now going to work on the power supply. Uh, I think there was one in the box here. Yes. All right. I think the mic was working. I was looking uh, over my shoulder to see if it was working, so uh, it is. Okay, so we have here a 1.8 Amperes uh, original toast rack power supply. So this one is only used by a toast rack. And if you think it's uh, something else, no it's not. They look like uh, the plus to uh, power supplies, but plus the ZX Spectrum Plus power supplies only output 1.4 Amperes, and these one output 1.85 Amperes at max. Uh, of course you can stretch that a bit, but no one comes close to 1.85 amperes with the standard setup, so don't worry about it. You can use a 1.4 as well, that's not a problem. Um, and these are even not used for the Plus 2, because the Plus 2 have a grey uh, power supply instead of a black one. Uh, and Fred thought, thought that grey was cool, and grey is not cool. Grey is ugly. Alright, so let's open this up. Uh, I, have, I had a feeling that one uh, pad is missing, so we will try to find another one. Uh, but first, let's um, open it up and see if the capacitor inside already has been replaced. I'm, I'm just looking at the screws. 
I need a Phillips screwdriver for this one here. And even then, <laughs> I'm not able to give them a twist. So let's get a bigger one. Oh, man, what's wrong with this one? This, uh, this screwdriver is too big. Let's try the other ones first. Oh man, these are so tight, you can hear it. Oh, wow. Do I have a better screwdriver here? Let me check. Does this really not work? It does fit. Oh man. Some screws get so tight after 35 years. Must be some kind of corrosion or something, I don't know. That's the first. Oh, you can hear it. This was really, really tight. Two done, down, two to go. Thank you, Lewis. I made a mistake yesterday about posting a sticker uh, with a Star Trek layout, and people didn't like that, so I removed the post. <laughs> I'm not just going to use Star Trek stickers, don't worry, guys. I just thought uh, I was being creative. Oh. So this has cost quite a lot of energy. You can hear how tight the screws are. Okay, one more. If I can... Yeah, I can still get it out, but it's really tight. Uh, why did I start with the most tight one? So, uh, I got loads of uh, original power supplies. Not too many for Toastrack, but loads for uh, for the AKs. And some of them uh, started zo uh, buzzing and other stuff. Um, and some uh, even had, had worse problems like bad boards that, that, that just too old and uh, broke, broke when, uh, when you look at them. So what I did is uh, I threw away some of the internal parts. You can see the corrosion here, the, the ends are black. So the, these screws are a bit dirty. So I threw the insides of the 48 case, oh, many of them I threw the insides away, but I kept the cases of the original ones because um, someone recently said um, that it could be wise to integrate modern um, switching power supplies, but use the, the original case. And that's a good idea, like, uh, like people do on Amigas and so, you know. So you can see here there's a, I think 4700 microfarad, yes, 4700 microfarad capacitor. And this is an original one, and we are going to replace it with a new one. And I got plenty of them, and they're exactly the same size, so this, that's easy. I see I got one with uh, the pins bent already. Let's get it out. There's no um, the screws in here. I think there should be, but it works, so why? Butter. And you can see <laughs> that's the way Sinclair did it. He just um, put the legs of the capacitor around the board. So let's just do that as well and let's add a quick mark to know where the negative side is and the positive side is so we know. No one will know that we marked it on the board here. And ugh, ugh, this is sticky. <laughs> You saw it happening here. <laughs> okay, let's get it off and put some new uh, uh, adhesive tape in between here in a moment. Uh, let's check the length of the, the legs. So I think we need the complete length here, otherwise it will not fit around the board. We cannot use that one. And we need to free the pins here so we can remove the solder from them. Right. That one is gone. Let's use the sucker again for emptying the holes. That was easy. Right. And now let's put in the new capacitor. This is also really important. If you don't do this, then uh, <coughs> there's a big chance that uh, the efficiency of the transformer will go down by a lot. And also, um, 
the question is if we still get about 9 volts on the output. And of course, because this is a transformer, it's not a, a DC DC converter or something, not a switching power supply. Um, this will not be 9 volts exactly at the output, uh, so it's about 11 volts by default when uh, when you're not uh, putting any load on it. So that's normal if you measure 11 volts on the output of a ZX power supply. Really, that's normal. Don't worry. Um, but if you put it on the load, it will go down to about uh, 10 volts, something like that. And that's not a problem because we have a 7805 regulator, um, load dropout regulator inside the spectrum that will take care to create a proper um, 5 volts out of the incoming uh, 9 volts, 10 or 11 or 12. But it, the problem is if you uh, if the input voltage is, uh, gets higher, then the 7805 will dissipate more heat. It gets hotter and it will become a problem uh, if it cannot um, get its heat out quickly enough. So make sure that you're using a proper uh, power supply and a proper 7805 and a proper heat sink and all the stuff. Right, so I put two layers on here. It's not really necessary, but I don't like to get the capacitor to touch the um, two pins where it's, where it's sold to. So this looks a lot nicer if you ask me. And it's really sticky, so it won't come off easily. <laughs> Uh, next thing to do on the power supply is always to check if the, the pads of all the other parts are soldered well. And I can see, for example, that the one the one coming out of the um, transformer is not looking that good. So I'm going to remove the solder from that and put some new solder on it. Oh, <laughs> my pump is clogged up a lot, so I have to clean it later on. So let's add some new solder on the spin here. Now I'm not going to remove all the sticky tape. <laughs> Why? <laughs> you can do that. I, I won't remove the old sticky tape. There's no reason for that. I get what you mean, by the way. It's not a problem. <laughs> I'm lazy. I just told you. I'm lazy. Come on. It's clucked up. I need to clean this up. Okay, let, let's do a quick clean. Some, some stuff here come out <laughs> yeah almost almost you can do it you can do it ah it's stuck yeah look at that big huge part here <laughs> okay so it's empty again we can clean up this okay that's good enough let's add some new solar So, and uh, the boards on the used, this board is a big bit uh, better quality than the 48k power supply boards, so I'm not worried at all. This looks quite good. Alright, now let's put it back in its case. And then we need to do something else as well. Let me check why it's not. I think, no, it should be oriented this way, is it? Or is it this way? I think it's this way. My bad. All right. And now let's make sure that the cable is not touching anything so there won't be any damage. This is good. All right. Um, so something I think is important as well is um, there's some, some original sticky tape on here as well. And you can see it's just, it's just uh, garbage. It's just falling off if you look at it. So let's remove the most of it, and I can clean it, I, I could, but there's no reason for that, you know. Oh, that, that was easy. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> That's what, uh, what you wanted. Uh, Lewis, was it? Yeah. Okay, so let's put some new on. And usually one layer is enough. We can check that, of course, and if it's not, we can add another layer. No, it's not enough. You can, I can feel it's not pushing it down, and I want to, I want to have it pushed down to the case so we know it's not going to wobble. Ah, that is better. So if you give it a shake, you can hear it's not wobbling. What you hear is uh, or the cable, I think, or something like that. It's not, not an issue. Okay, we can close it up. And as you see, so just saw I put some um, something underneath to make sure it's not going to be damaged. 
I'm using the same screws, although I know it's quite hard to get them in again. I've not tested this power supply, but I'm sure um, it will work. Transformers won't die easily, you know. But at least we're, we know now that the capacitor is new. The diodes will be good enough for years. Alright. So you can see we've, uh, we've been uh, streaming for about two hours now, almost two hours. So it's not an easy job to uh, refurbish a toast track. And of course it will uh, speed up if you do it without a stream. But you know, I like doing this. That's one. Whew. A lot of energy. Alright. And one more. And then we need to find another pad for the bottom. And I'm not sure if I have one in the neighborhood, but I will check that. Okay, this is perfectly mounted again. I don't know what this is. It's gone now. Alright, and let's try to find a pad. I think I got some power supplies last week. We didn't leave them then. I'm sure I have them somewhere. Do we have more boxes for stuff here? Yes, this is the box I needed. Just a second, guys. And the power supplies are not in here. <sighs> Why didn't leave it? Um, So where are the other? Oh, there's the other box. I was missing a box. I have it here. This is the box I'm looking for. Just a second, guys. So, look, I got a, another power supply here. And I'm going to remove one of these pads to do, put it on the one that we just refurbished. And we'll sort out that power supply later on. All right, and because I just removed it, it's not that sticky anymore. I will use a tiny amount of uh, super glue, and I will not do it on the power supply itself. Otherwise, we can mess it up. I will put it on the pad itself. That won't come off anytime soon. These ones are all st sticky enough. All right, so that's done. Let's. Get to the other side and test this power supply. So I'm not sure how long this one has, that hasn't been used, but before uh, connecting it to a ZX Spectrum, I will always make sure that it's outputting a correct voltage. And then you still cannot tell for sure that it's probably working, but. At least you know that you're having the correct polarity and other stuff. So let's grab a multimeter because I don't want to uh, blow up my refurbished stove track after all the hard work. Okay, let's see what voltage it outputs. You can see it on the display, I think. Okay, so. The inside is the minus and the outside is the plus and it says 12.9 volts, which is okay. Because uh, as I told, if you connect it, it will get down to, uh, well this one will get, get probably to about 11 volts. And that's good. Um, if, you, uh, if you want to really make sure, then do use a test board or something. So we're using a test board now. And power that up. And that's just fine. Nothing wrong with that. And one thing you can always do is listen to the transformer, and they're always buzzing. So uh, you cannot hear it, but this one is buzzing. They're always doing that. That's nothing special. So if you were, if you are bothered about that, then move it aside, and you won't hear it that much. Uh, that's uh, that's normal for a transformer. Anyway, 
and maybe for uh, the age as well, of course. So we've tested it on a um, for the playboard, and I will just give the new owner this cable because uh, this one has tested, been tested a lot, and it's a proper um, PCDC cable. We don't have any sound yet. That's because it's not plugged in. All right. So. This is a proper uh, setup with an original power supply, which is perfectly working. So I like this. one so why is this not working the uh, toaster timings and um, because on the for the K you can add more colors to the border so it does surprise me a bit uh, I don't think it's uh, for the K mode is it oh it is for the K mode it's a, it's a, the wrong <laughs> okay it's for the K mode so now we're in for the K uh, basic and now it works like I expected so now we can add more colors to the border <laughs> I learned something so we can add as many colors as we want. That's what I like. All right. Nice. So uh, I think we're done with that uh, refurbishment job. Uh, am I forgetting something? Let me think. I don't think so. Let me get my bootless again. Um, we should do full diagnostic software check. We, we already did a diagnostic uh, run, so that's OK. ULA type, we've checked. Um, uh, okay, let, let's finish some testing. L l why not? Um, to make it complete, let's, uh, let's fill in my uh, refurbishment story here. So, first question from this booklet is How is this ZX Spectrum identified? A, a wonderful toast rack. We finished refurbishing the Spectrum on 18th of February in 2020. Did we need to perform any repairs or was it mainly beautifying and just uh, making it shine again? All right, so we mod modified, uh, we didn't modify composite output because it already has it. We did clean the edge connector, we installed a new membrane, we replaced the regulator, no, we did not do that. We added a heat sink, we did that. We made sure all rubber feet are in, we checked it on the bottom of this case, also on the power supply. We replaced all electrolytic capacitors. We didn't perform a ROM fix for DIV IDE, which is only for 48K boards. We did improve the composite video output quality, as you can see. Uh, we did run full diagnostic software, we checked correct ULA type. We're going to test a different C again. Oh, of course. Oh, the car was not in, so that's my bad. Just wait a second more. Okay, yes. All right, let's uh, let's run a demo because uh, we can, you know. Let's uh, just grab one without looking. To, so we're just putting. Some, some, uh, somewhere, uh, I don't know, I don't know this demo, but let's load up something. What, what's this? What do we have here? Okay, music. Nice. Okay, so get on C is working. 
We're going to do a test with the dip ID as well. firmware still I have to update that on this specific card uh, let's load a demo here uh, loads of other demos I really don't know which ones are which uh, what's this I don't know oh <laughs> this only runs on Pentagon so that won't work uh, let's do another one then uh, what's this one here Loading a lot of data. Still loading. <laughs> wow. So this ID is working as well. Okay, where uh, when does the picture come in? seen this demo before so I wonder how it looks like. I can watch this for hours, but I don't have the time. <laughs> I like this demo, by the way. You know, um, oh, the reset button works. <laughs> That's what I want to know. You know, uh, you can play videos on the device interface. So let's uh, let's uh, play a video. Uh, for example, let's uh, let's play Fortnite. This is Fortnite on the ZX Spectrum. I'm not joking. <laughs> it is Fortnite on the ZX Spectrum. And with audio, by the way. I think I've been playing this myself and recorded this. So if you want to know, you can play Fortnite on the ZX Spectrum. <laughs> I'm not joking. I'm real. Unreal. Um, okay. Let's see what else is on here. Um, oh. Trailer of a Star Trek. So, sorry, Star Wars. It was a mistake. And that's Ray, obviously. Sorry for the light, by the way. Let's move it a bit. Uh, that's even worse. <laughs> Sorry, the, the audio is not that loud. It's because uh, it's using the, uh, the standard uh, AY output. So this is a Star Wars trailer, played on the ZX Spectrum. Not from the last one, by the way. I think this was Star Wars 7 or something. Or 8, I don't know. <laughs> it wasn't 9. The quality is not that good. Yeah, I don't think you can really see what's going on here. Uh, also, Star Trek, by the way. <laughs> I don't know which, which which video this is. Let me check. Okay, this is the Enterprise. Or, or no, it's not. I don't know. It's Netflix, it says. <laughs> oh, this is Discovery. I hate Discovery. So let's move along. All right. Um, what else do I have here? What What of this? Oh, it's me. Thank you. <laughs> Alright, so you can you can do lots of cool things with the device interface, if you didn't know. Uh, so they're still available on Bytelight.com and they're not that expensive, so it's a really cool interface. Alright. 
Uh, what else do we need to test? We already tested tape loading. I'm not going to do that again because we know it works. Uh, there's no speaker, so we can uh, say don't say it's not applicable. And we tested the keyboard, but let's do it once again. Everything is working just fine. Okay. Uh, we did put on a refurbishment label already, and I'm going to do a check on the delay temperature, which is about 40 degrees. So it's perfect. It's been on for about 10 minutes, which is quite normal. All right. So last thing, uh, last question here. So we we uh, filled in all the uh, all the fields here. But last question is who has been working on the ZX Spectrum and there are no other people in this house that can repair ZX Spectrums than myself, so let's put on my name then. Uh, oh. So that's complete. That belongs to this computer here. Alright. Um, I think I need to add a, some uh, video cables for the person who ordered this one, but we'll do that uh, later. Let's see if we're missing something. Let's check the chat. I don't know which demo it was. <laughs> Every time I play a demo, people ask me which demo it is. I just selected one random, so I don't know. Uh, really, I don't know. Um, so, uh, <laughs> so just just download any demo you can find. And if you want to find properly good demos, then check out Pue.net. Um, if you don't know how to uh, spell that, then just type in something in Google. Google will uh, find it for you. Poe.net, and you will you can find if you select the spectrum there in the in the prods, it's in the within the production page on the website. You can find dozens of demos from the last month, even months, even. So uh, there are, there are so many demos made these days, and uh, they they're getting better and better. And uh, so if you like them, visit Poe.net. Um, right, I think we're done for now. Uh, we've been working on the stove track and power supply for about two hours. We've done a lot of work. Uh, I like to make I like making this uh, video so people know uh, what is involved with refurbishing a machine like a toast rack. Uh, this one is working 100% uh, and will last for uh, at least 20, 25, 30 years or something like that. Uh, that's all I wanted to say for you for today. Um, I will uh, keep this uh, video on, but I will probably make a shorter version for um, as a separate video uh, for people that really want to refurbish their own toast rack and don't want all the hassle like me saying these things I will make uh, most probably will make a, a separate video except if you if you guys say um, if you guys say uh, I should uh, just leave this video complete on uh, uh, instead of uh, editing uh, one down then I, c I will leave it with this video if you think it's good enough then why bother and, uh, and uh, edit another one that, because that will it cost me a lot of time as well, of course. Thank you for watching, guys. Thank you for your comments. And uh, if you have any questions, please leave them in the underneath and the, underneath the video. If you're not, we're not able to attend this video live in the live stream, it's no problem. Just tell me what you need to know, and I will try to answer them. Uh, I'm very, uh, I have a big backlog of messages at the moment, so I really need to work on that. I will do some more this afternoon and more tomorrow. Um, uh, always working. But there's so much, much to do here. And this is, a, I think, a good video showing what is involved with those refurbishment. So, thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.